In today's Wrath of Math lesson, we'll see some examples and non-examples of binary operations. We went over the definition of binary operations in a previous lesson, and I'll leave a link to that down in the description. As a quick recap, remember that a binary operation on a set S is a function from the Cartesian product S cross S back to that same set S. In other words, a binary operation takes two elements from the same set and assigns them to exactly one element of that same set. So let's check out a few examples and non-examples. Which of the following are binary operations on the set of natural numbers? And here we've got four prompts. Note that this dot between the n's and m's just represents a generic operation. And on the right, we specify what the operation actually is in each case. So in the first example, we're talking about the binary operation of multiplication. This is a binary operation on the natural Natural numbers. For one, multiplication is a function. So when we multiply two numbers, we will get exactly one answer. Additionally, if we multiply two natural numbers, we will always get another natural number. So the natural numbers are closed under multiplication. Thus, multiplication over the naturals is a binary operation. If we take two natural numbers, like two and four, for example, we will get another natural number, exactly one, in this case, eight. Next is the operation of subtraction. Is this a binary operation on the set of natural numbers? If we subtract two natural numbers, we will certainly get exactly one answer. So this is a function. But is subtraction closed on the natural numbers? The answer is no. For example, five minus three equals two. Two is a natural number, so that works out just fine, but what if we reverse the order? Consider three minus five. This is equal to negative two, and negative two is not an element of the natural numbers. Thus, subtraction over the naturals is not closed because it's not true that whenever we subtract two natural numbers, we get another natural number. That is not true. So subtraction is not a binary operation on the naturals. Next, we've got this sort of constant function operation. This says plug in any two natural numbers to the operation and it's just going to spit out two. This is very simple and it is a binary operation. For starters, it is a function because any input gets exactly one output, that one output being two. And then it is closed because whatever natural numbers we put in, we will get two out. And two is a natural number, so this operation is a function and it's closed on the natural numbers, so it is a binary operation on the natural numbers. All right, last example in this question. This operation takes two natural numbers and spits out plus or minus the square root of their product. This is certainly not a binary operation because it isn't a function. If we combined the numbers two and eight under this operation, we would get the positive square root of 16, which is equal to four. However, we would also get the negative square root of 16, negative four. Since each input does not get exactly one output, this operation is not a function, and so it is not a binary operation. As a quick side note, recall that we say a binary operation is commutative if the order the operation is carried out in doesn't matter, so that n times m would be the same as m times n. Which of these operations are commutative? You can pause the video and take a minute to think about it. The answer is they are all commutative except for this one, subtraction. All right, on to the next example. This is a bit of a tricky, subtle one. Consider the function that maps each pair of real numbers l and w to the area of the rectangle having l and w as its length and width. Is this a binary operation? Well, we already know that it is a function, so then we would just ask, is it closed? One more time, I'll specify that we know this is a function. Whatever we plug in for the length and the width, we get exactly one area back, the area that is length times width. That's how you find the area of a rectangle. However, strictly speaking, this is not a binary operation. This is because length and width are linear measures, like centimeters, feet, 
inches, and so on, whereas area is not. Area is a square measure, like centimeters squared, feet squared, or just generically units squared. So this function is not closed. It takes linear measures, length and width, and sends them to this square measure of the area. An example of what this function might be doing is taking three centimeters and five centimeters and sending this ordered pair to 15 centimeters squared. And these do not come from the same set as this. So this is certainly a subtle example of a function that isn't closed, and it's subtle enough that you could rephrase the question so that it is a binary operation by just being a bit more specific about certain things, but we won't worry about that. Hopefully you found this an interesting example. Let's get into another short collection. Which of the following are binary operations on the set of odd positive integers? That's what this is here. It's the set containing all positive integers, k, where k is odd. So all odd positive integers. Is addition a binary operation on this set? The answer is no, because addition is not closed on the set of odd positive integers. For example, 3 and 3 are odd positive integers. If we add them, we get 6, an even positive integer. That's not in the set, so addition isn't closed. It's not a binary operation on this set. And in fact, you could easily prove that the addition of any two odd integers is an even integer. What about multiplication? As it turns out, multiplication is a binary operation on this set. When we multiply two integers, we get exactly one answer, so it is a function, and when we multiply odd positive integers, we always get another odd positive integer. And here's a quick look at how we know that. We can represent two arbitrary odd positive integers as 2k plus 1 and 2j plus 1, where k and j can both be any integer that's greater than or equal to 0. Then, if we multiply these two positive odd integers, this is what we get. And then factoring a 2 out of the first three terms gives us this expression, which is, by definition, an odd number. Number. It's a multiple of 2 plus 1. And we know that this is positive because k and j are non-negative. So the smallest it could be is 1, if k and j were both equal to 0. Thus, we know that multiplication on this set is a function, and we've just demonstrated that when we multiply two elements from this set to odd positive integers, we get another odd positive integer. So indeed, multiplication is closed on this set, so multiplication is a binary operation on the set of odd odd positive integers. For a quick example of multiplying odd positive integers, how about 5 times 7? That's 35, just as we suspect another odd positive integer. All right, last example. This one is also a little tricky. I'm going to try to go through this one a little bit more quickly. No worries if you don't completely follow, but I hope you'll find it an interesting example. Let s be the set of fractions that, when written in lowest terms, have denominators of 1, 2, or 4. So we want to know, is addition on s a binary operation? We, of course, know that addition is a function, so that's out of the way. Then, is addition closed on the set s? If we add two fractions, say a over b plus c over d, where these fractions, when written in lowest terms, have denominators of 1, 2, or 4, will their sum also have a denominator of 1, 2, or 4 when written in lowest terms? And the answer is yes. For starters, we could just assume if we take these arbitrary fractions from our set, let them be written in lowest terms. That way we know that both b and d are equal to 1, 2, or 4. Then we could rewrite this sum as a times d plus c times b all over db. And we would get that by multiplying a over b by d over d and multiplying c over d by b over b in order to get common denominators and then combining the fractions. Then we would want to know if we write this fraction in lowest terms, will it have a denominator of 1, 2, or 4? Well, what could its current denominator, db, be equal to? d 
times b could be equal to 1, in which case the fraction already is in lowest terms and it has a denominator of 1. d times b could be equal to 2, in which case if the fraction's already in lowest terms, then of course it has a denominator of 2. If it's not in lowest terms, the only factor we could cancel out would be a factor of 2. Thus, we would cancel out a factor of 2 from the numerator and denominator, bringing the denominator from 2 to 1. b times d could also be equal to 4. Then if our fraction is in lowest terms, we have our denominator of 4. If it's not in lowest terms, then we could either cancel out a factor of 2 from the numerator and denominator, bringing us to 2, or we could cancel out a factor of 4 from the numerator and denominator, bringing the denominator to 1. Either way, we have one of our desired denominators. And to make sure this is clear, we know that the only factors we could cancel out would be 2 or 4, because those are the only factors of 4 that are greater than 1. If we're not able to cancel out a factor of 2 or 4, then the fraction is already in lowest terms. Next, if one of d or b is equal to 2 and the other is equal to 4, then d times b is 8. So in that case, our denominator would be 8, d would be, say, equal to 2, and b would be equal to 4, it doesn't matter which is which, and thus we could factor 2 out of the numerator and cancel it out with a factor of 2 in the denominator, bringing the denominator down to 4. And then the same logic would apply as we previously went over for a denominator of 4. It either is in lowest terms, or it could be further reduced to a denominator of 2, or a denominator of 1. If b and d are both equal to 4, then our denominator would be 16, and you could use similar logic to what we just went over with 8 to show that this is going to work out as well. We'll get a reduced denominator of 1, 2, or 4. So that's just a quick explanation of how we know that addition on this set S is closed. If we take any two fractions that, when written in lowest terms, have denominators of 1, 2, or 4, and add them, we will get another fraction that, when written in lowest terms, has a denominator of 1, 2, or 4. So those were some examples and non-examples of binary operations, and I hope they helped you really understand the definition. Remember, a binary operation has to be a function, and it has to be closed, meaning that it is a function from the Cartesian product of a set with itself back to that same set. It takes two elements, both from the same set, and assigns them to exactly one element also in that set. And that's it for today. So I hope this video helped you understand some examples and non-examples of binary operations. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet.